What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech. Once again, today we're going to be taking a look at my Chia plotter and the parts we decided to go with and a little bit of the reasoning why surrounding it. This will be a multi-part series because we will then cover, of course, how to plot and then some networking and network attached storage to move the plots to to farm with. So if you're interested in any of this, make sure you go ahead and hit the sub and the notification bell. Let's get into it right after a word from our sponsor. The following is a paid advertisement. Prime XBT is an established trading platform that was founded in 2018 and remained in business through the bear market. For my personal research, there are three main reasons they set themselves apart from other trading platforms. High leverage, low fees, and most importantly, privacy. Prime XBT requires no user information to start trading. The newest module called Covesting allows users to copy the trading activity of other users. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. All right, so first things first, why are we mining Chia? Well, because, you know, graphics cards are hard to get a hold of and we can get a hold of hard drives, so why not? If you take a look at the calculator, which they have posted online, you can make about $18.52 a month with one terabyte or so per terabyte. Now, we don't actually know if this is accurate because there's no listings of it currently. We will have to see exactly what the exchange rate is going to be because as you can see here, the exchange rate is they are projecting it to be around $20 So for the coin, which could be true or could not be true. It could be worth a dollar. And if that's the case, then we're only going to be making a dollar per terabyte a month. And who knows what the launch price will be at. So enter at your own risk. So there you go. This is kind of what I would call hedge mining. Why are we choosing Chia over Filecoin? Well, that's because if we can get in at the base of something that has just started before the exchange rates hit and all of that, we have a higher likelihood of actually making some revenue. Getting into something like Filecoin requires a lot more infrastructure right off the bat to start with, and the competition is heavy. That along with some issues that they've had in the past, I'm just going to stick with the Chia. The Chia coin also is being developed or created by the developer of BitTorrent. So there's a little bit of clout behind it and it uses proof of space, which we will cover in our WTF is Chia video on Saturday. Okay, so for the rig, let's get into the parts that we chose and why. So for the plotter, we went with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X pretty much because it's the only one in stock and we can get our hands on it pretty easily. That being said, the 3950X would be a good option here. And the more threads, the better, because the way the plotter works is essentially you are able to assign an amount of threads and amount of memory and do the calculation out there to basically be able to plot in parallel, which we will cover in our plotting video later in the week. The motherboard we went with is the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. This particular motherboard has all of the features you could want and none of the features that you don't want, so it keeps it low at about $120 for the price point USD. And it has an additional four pin CPU power, which means that our 5800X won't be power starved or anything like that, which can happen if you only have a single eight pin. We'll get into that. We've been testing a lot of different motherboards. We'll get into that in another video if you're interested. The memory we went with is the G-Skill Trident Z Neo. This is kind of my go-to for memory with Ryzen. We wanted it in dual channel, of course, so we have two eight gig sticks. This is going to allow us to basically be able to do two plots at a time if we're using, of course, the method that allows for more memory, which we'll get go over once again in the plotting video, but that's the reasoning for it. Now going up to 32 gigabytes with more cores and more threads will allow you to essentially plot more in parallel. And in parallel means that you're basically doing multiple plots at the same time. So you'll be able to plot faster. So if you can get a 5950X with more threads and you can get 64 gigs of memory, that sort of thing, you're gonna be able to plot out more. I'm still testing to find the optimal range here as well, just to be clear. And we'll go over it once I kind of get in a better idea. 
For the video card, we just have a GT 1030. Take whatever you're not mining on or is laying around the house, throw it in there just to get a video signal. That's all you really need, just something cheap for the video. Now for the hard drives in this setup, this is where it gets a little bit more important. You are going to want multiple NVMe drives. The reason for this is that you want one NVMe drive to essentially be the temp directory for the plotter and the other NVMe drive to be the destination of the plot. In my case, this rig has two and one terabyte Western Digital NVMe drives just because their price point's good. It is PCIe 3.0, so it's not as fast as the 4.0 drives, but for price to performance, we're sitting pretty here. Now, if you wanted to change this into a full on farm and plotting rig, it would be pretty simple because the case we're using is the Cooler Master Half XP Evo, which would allow for up to four three and a half inch drives. So you could get those big 16 terabyte drives and slap them in there and have, you know, 64, terabytes of storage in the rig with it and then you would just move once the plot is completed onto the nvme drive you would just copy it over to the hard drives and then go from there if you do go that route though i highly recommend getting a raid controller and putting those four drives in raid zero so you can speed up those read write times especially when copying over the power supply that we have is the ntxt 850 watt this is what we had laying around you shouldn't need as much. You're just gonna need enough to power whatever the CPU is that you're running, right? So if you went with a 5950X, worst case, you know, anything above 450 watts is gonna be plenty as long as you have the additional CPU power uh, on that power supply, right? So you just need to kind of play your cards out there and make sure that you're calculating everything correctly. For the cooler, we have the Noctua NHD 15. I wanted an air cooler. You could potentially put a single 120 millimeter like AIO or 240 millimeter AIO in this particular case, but air is just gonna be a little bit better. For me, I find it that the, the Noctua NHD 15 it competes with the performance of pretty much all the AIOs at this point, unless you're getting into the 360 rads. I know the AIOs are getting a little bit better. I've kind of always been against them. I don't like it when a pump dies and I'm gone and then my CPU overheats. I'm not a fan of that. I don't, I don't know why. I'm more of a fan of fans. You know what I'm saying? So now let's talk about the operating system. I wanted to do the initial guide, which we will be doing once again, I said later in the week, on Windows 10. Problem being there is that Windows 10 is about 20% slower than Linux. So I'm gonna tell you, you can get the GUI with Ubuntu, it's easy to install, and then if all you're doing is the plotting, it's pretty straightforward, especially now that they added an easy install .dev file on the Chia website or the Chia GitHub to just download and run through the installer. We'll go through that process later, uh, you're just going to want to do Ubuntu. Otherwise, your plotting is going to be so super slow. And that's the way it goes. Now, we are doing this because we want to essentially have a dedicated rig that is plotting all the time. I'm working on some scripts and stuff like that. We already have our network storage set up, but it's only over a uh, single gig and it's taking quite a while, right? So 300 gigabytes, it's approximating around an hour and a half to move the data over to the storage array, which is just too long. We're, we need to speed that up. So we are gonna be getting 10 gig switch and all that from a buddy that I used to work with. And we got two 10 gig add-in cards for the Dell 720 XDs. We're gonna be going over all that setup and the infrastructure setup so that you guys understand why and the importance of how this all functions to basically be able to plot and farm the most efficient way possible. Now on Reddit, I did see that a guy was getting about a plot an hour, and that's the K32s, which is 100 gigabyte plots. And that's pretty impressive. That was a 3950X. I'm not quite there. We did, and I did this in parallel, right? So this particular rig looks to be able to do about uh, six in, what was it? So 12, that would have been 18 hours. So it can do about six in 18 hours, right? So one every three hours. 
your mileage will vary depending on how much you want to upgrade that CPU. But the faster that you can plot, the faster you can start farming, which means that you have a better likelihood of snagging a block reward. Now, all block rewards are solo right now, so you need to keep that in mind as well. Because it's solo and there's like 300 petabytes or something along those lines on the network, you're going to need to get a lot in to be competitive. I do want to look into, of course, how we could create a pool or something along those lines. I think that there are some options there. It shouldn't be too difficult because we should be able to basically create some sort of software to do that. And I'm sure somebody will be getting on it. I don't know that I have the bandwidth to, but I'm looking at a few people that I know that watch this channel to help us out. So hopefully you guys can help us out there. So this is the plotting build. If you guys want full assembly instructions for something like this, please let me know in the comment section below. I don't mind doing one. I would need to basically, I don't know, hire or rent out a cameraman to help me do that at some point. I'm just a one man show here. My wife helps, but not near with the uh, video stuff, right? So not to that sort of extent. So hopefully, that changes as we grow the channel and that sort of thing. We can start doing more fun things outside of this room. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.